Okay, this is, uh, the episode is Bingo. I'm Peter Gould, uh, executive producer and co-creator of Better Call Saul. Yay! Patrick? Oh, hi. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm the cheerleader. I'm Patrick Fabian, and I play Howard Hamlin. <laughs> hi, I'm Skip McDonald. I'm the editor of the episode. Jonathan Banks? Larissa Kondraki, I directed this episode. And I'm Ray Seahorn. And this episode was written by Jennifer Hutchson. And it's, it's a... This this one is uh, this one for some reason is close to my heart. Yeah. Yes, I I, I don't don't ask me why. Well, I think that's kind of why we're doing commentary. That's true. <laughs> so you have to talk. It's about close to my heart. Yes. I'll tell you why. Is because this is a. Uh, there's so many things in this episode that that I value. One is that uh, Mike and Jimmy work together a little bit. Yeah. But mainly and most importantly, it's that we get a little insight into. Uh, what Jimmy wants out of life, what's important to him, and, uh, and of course, uh, his relationship with Kim. Are those real mug shots, or are they anybody that we know? No, they were very carefully selected, created. Um, I mean, there was such an enormously me- or an- meticulous process to make sure everything was perfect, and the art department, makeup department, some of these people look completely different. It was unreal what they went through. Oh. Hmm. Voicemails from you accusing him of petty theft. I tell him, hey, we're going to... This is uh, such pretty eyes, Jonathan. Now, now, Jonathan, this is one of your most... This is one of your great, subtle moments here. But towards the end, am I right in thinking that there's a little wink? Yeah, I do silent well here. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And especially off-camera silent. Um... I'll tell you what was fun with this is Barry and this Ahmed, Omid? Is yes, that yes. How you pronounce? Barry and Omid, yes. Omid, I can never, because I'm not used to the name, but I enjoyed this. And then by the time we get there and Barry sits down next to me, which is coming up, Barry was just so good. We're also of the same vintage. Barry and I have been around a while. And there's, I think, I almost started to sense a relationship between you guys in the previous episode. Oh, absolutely. Where there's, there's Omid, Omid's character's a little bit more the hothead. And Barry, uh, Barry's been around the block, as you say. Well, I mean, the line here is a friend, and I call him a friend. That's right. And this, of course, Jimmy is, I think, in this scene, is being a really good lawyer. He's, mm-hmm. he's, really, he's really watching out for his client. You can go now. And this is, Larissa, was this the actual courthouse? You're not talking to my um, I think so, yeah. They, yeah, it was. They were very, again, like, su- such a great cruise, and they were able to, ma- it was a different floor, but they made it look different. And, um, but, yeah, it, it was. And it was... I, I actually think the blocking, they kind of ran it, and then once, you know, these two greats sat down and did it, there was nothing to do but turn the camera on. I, I literally, everyone keeps telling me how great the scene is, and I was like, well, I, I, I did this, nothing. I love this piece of dialogue, too, because it starts out with, did you ever have jet lag? And the two of them talk about, two old guys talking about, well, yeah. It's so good. <laughs> And Louis, this is your first. This is your first episode with us. You're, you're you're a new director. You were a new director for me anyway. Oh, this shot. They're great shot. This yeah. shot, I just love. And mm-hmm. and 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 this is one of the. This is uh, one of those special moments when S- Skip finds you guys. You guys have the right shot, and you stick with it. Yeah, it's nice to be able to stick with them because one, they're a great looking shot, and the performances are so good that. You're, you stay so interested in it. Well, Mike, she's got it's, it's also the, the beginning of this scene is, is an example of when we, uh, we, write, we come up with something in the writer's room that turns out to be a lot more difficult to actually accomplish. Uh, that, that whole going over the, uh, the mug shots and then coming down to Jimmy. I think we all thought when we, when we came up with that that it would be horizontal and that it would be relatively simple. But you, hmm. you came up with this. It, I, I, at a certain I point, I was ready to give up on it, but then you, you found a way to do it. I, I mean, uh, again, not to take credit, I think we were in one, and uh, the whole way I know you guys is through video conference, and Vince just sort of went, you could also just do this. <laughs> and then we did, and I get a lot of credit for it, but 
It's Vince's hand. And well, it was written. I don't think you're taking any credit. They just told you. It wasn't you just told me that she sent you sent photos of the doubles in some of these locations with the shots you were setting up and the, yeah, even, but that even one those sh- were brilliant. But that That's, one shot is very. There's, there's something good that happens here too because when Mike says when Mike says to him. You know, I don't know what she's going to tell you. My guess is not much. Mm-hmm. She's just learn. Oh, that's so. a beautiful and, moment. Mm-hmm. And the, and these guys. And was there a wink at the end of this? The two of us. I I don't think it. I don't know if it made the editing or not. But we'll see here in a second. But the goodbye is again two old friends. Hmm. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's yeah. A <laughs> just a little justice. I, th- I think I watched the scene about 10 or 12 times before I saw that. And a couple of people asked me what this thing is, and it is a, uh, it's a, it's, it's a back loosener upper. I'm forgetting what it's actually <laughs> called. You saw Saul Goodman use it. You saw Saul Goodman use it on, the, uh, on, on Breaking Bad yeah. briefly. Was it a chi? A chi machine, machine. that's That's correct. That's That's exactly it's a chi machine, yes. (laughs) That we actually shot that in the last last day of production in a little uh, recreation of the Saul Goodman set. Wait, is that bridge green screen? No. No, it's out in the parking lot. There was we were hoping all those lights would come on and they didn't, but then I think it actually was one of those um, happy accidents because it's it's so graphic but it's not overly Mm -hmm. graphic, so it's It's quite gorgeous. Beautiful, and you, you know, this is actually today on the commentary is the first time I've met Larissa face to face. But we had, I, I, I just love, I love, what, I love what you did with this episode. We knew, we knew we were in good hands with you as soon as you started sending us. Uh, as Ray, as Ray was, uh, Ray was mentioning, as soon as you started showing us the pictures you took at the locations, because you took these very graphic, telling stills. Of, of the locations, and they were also had that, that beautiful Fuji color. Well, see, and I'm so glad you mentioned that, and I because now the amount of lenses I've been able to purchase and write off because it's proof <laughs> that it's, uh, <laughs> it's gotten me. Oh, good, oh, we have to talk about this stuff. afterwards, yes. What is that? That is something I walked into by mistake on location, and I read all the scripts on the plane, and there was t- in two... Um, Two episodes, or twice, Jimmy had said the worm has turned, uh-huh. and uh, and I was like, oh, we need wow. to start. And so they they found so it, and we and we were, I was very you know because my girlfriend's a vegan and animal, so I was like, we can't hurt it. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna wait for it to come out, and when it does, then then the car and everybody else. But we have to work on the caterpillars. Time, oh, Lord. Melissa and Nina sitting there tapping their watches, saying, All right, we're ready. Let's get the worm out here. <laughs> 113. Holy shit, 114. what are you doing? Shh. 115. 116. 117. And this was, uh, w- this is really a result of us thinking about where, where Chuck, what Chuck is thinking about after the events in uh, 105, where he's, where he's hospitalized. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's now got, what the hell was that? he now knows he has to make a change. It's not enough to write oh. letters. To, uh, and of course, Jennifer Hutchison wrote this episode okay. and, and just did a fantastic. Oh, there, there you are. Yeah. 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 Uh, did, did a uh, did a fantastic job. He's he's determined to get better. He needs to get out. And Jimmy's listening for the key word: "Was I have to get back to work?" Yeah, it's like um, you know, like taking small so, but, of poison. Larissa, this is this is. I'm interested in hearing from you because had you ever been to Albuquerque before? No. And what's it like? What's it like coming in? To, did you know anybody on on the set? You'd worked with Melissa Bernstein before. Yes. Is there anyone who else who was a familiar face? Texted me this morning, reminding me not to embarrass her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no, I hadn't. And and then you know, it's the follow up to literally the my favorite show ever that I had actually not binge watched. I had watched like every Sunday, excited for five years. So I was ner- I guess you said we can- I was basically scared shitless that I was going to screw this up. And um, in a way, it's one of those things where you go, let's embrace and have fun. And and people, I, I did tell Melissa, I'm like, it's kind of like Pleasantville over here. Everyone's so nice. And so it was, people were very warming. And um, Pleasantville, that sounds terrible. <laughs> it's like, I mean, the first act, like the good part, when the color comes. Um, but, uh, and, 
there was just nothing that couldn't be accomplished. Like you would sort of go, is this too much? And they'd be like, no, we'll figure out a way to do that. We love challenges. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was absolutely yeah, super. I, I'll be right back. I got to get a few more things out of the car. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. I think everybody comes in a little frightened and yeah. tentative because there's there's a lot to live up to. Well, I was going to say, Patrick and I understand the shitting, yeah. shitting in your pants approach to this, <laughs> to this particular <laughs> project. <laughs> <laughs> you just you bring your own, you know, plastic sheet. You're right. You're fine. Yeah. But yeah, and then and yeah, then, and then at some point you do it. You have to stop and say like, you gotta you gotta play. But people this are around. very nice and they're and they're like, yeah. we brought you here for ideas, and then mm -hmm. you know, and then, but then also with the actors, you're just going. Jesus, like, everyone's so good, so you kind of just pretend for a week, and then you go home and breathe. <laughs> I'm, I'm, amazing. I'm, st I'm still pretending, as a matter yeah. of fact. <laughs> I soil myself limited, but nonetheless. This is, I love the way Bob plays this, because if you watch the scene without... In retrospect, you realize he's messing up some of this, the, the 413 uh -huh. thing on purpose uh -huh. to, to, to lure Chuck into doing his work for him. But in the moment, he's, he's, he's faking it really well. It's yeah, interesting. He's, yeah. He's, it, he's great. Bob's great at like playing, and I learned from watching him do that, that you, ha you have to play what's there in the moment on the page. Yes. He, he, never, he, doesn't, he never inserts a little quotation marks for the audience right. to know, oh, he's faking him out. Michael, I, his hand acting sometimes is genius. Like the little things. Mm -hmm. The little shake or he'll like yeah. make a fist, yeah. He used, to, he used to be a hand model, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, you, you've did, you, did, you do some, I don't know if we're going to be talking about it, but you're, you do some wonderful hand acting all the way through the series, and especially I noticed in, uh, in episode 10, uh, there, there, there are some, oh, there's really? some, there's some, there's some slightly nervous movements that really tell a lot about where, where, where Kim is and what she's thinking. Yeah. I think thank you, unless it was distracting. Um, it's absolutely <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, but that, no but that is from, and everybody here is is from theater. You know, you you've got to tell the story with your whole body. Yeah, and just in case you're missing it, we're talking about fucking hand acting. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about bodies. And, and one of the things that uh, we try to do is to, uh, you know, so much of television and movies is, is uh, a series of choker close-ups. Yeah, yeah. And we try, we try to let the actors perform with uh, the, their whole, their Which whole. Which I bodies. love. Yeah. You guys' use of wides is. is uh, there's beautiful. one. Yeah, and this is, of course, Arthur Albert, uh, our DP, just so doing his usual stunning job. And so nice. And it's a beautiful composition too. Arthur actually mm -hmm. texted me the image from the monitor on one of these shots when you were when you were shooting, and I, mm. oh, this is going to be good. I'm going to yes. like this. Room to grow. Dream big, I say. Got a decent sized conference room, not as big as. Hamlin. My friend Julie Kavner does the vo voice for Marge Simpson, is so hooked on the show. And she, she was so excited for him when he was going to get the big office space. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I swear to God. Make it look like the front of a Cracker Barrel, huh? Now you're talking. I like Jimmy's casual shirt. I like his sort of Saturday shirt, is what I call it, right? <laughs> yeah, he's wearing blue. They're both wearing blue. Imagine that. Uh, an offshoot of Hamlin to go blue, but nonetheless, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is one of my. Uh, again, this is this is a scene that I just love. I love this scene. because yeah. there's such warmth between these two, and I really watch this and want them to be together. Well, you know, in, wa in watching it, since, since I'd read the script, of course, I know what's coming. And so as I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, Kim doesn't really see it yet. She's just all on the side of, isn't this great? Isn't this great? She doesn't mm -hmm. see the trap that's sort of being laid for her. Mm -hmm. It's a nice trap, but nonetheless, it's going to put her in a bind. And, she d and you played it very well. Yeah. Pulled it off only. really well. Now, is that really Albuquerque out there? Or is that, yeah. That, yeah. that is Albuquerque. <laughs> that was, yeah. Another beautiful shot. Of course, this is the shot you end the episode with, too. Yeah. That, that was one of the mm -hmm. pictures. I like that one. Office. You gotta go with the corner office. I remember uh, <laughs> in, the, in our tone meeting having to explain to you what the corner office thing meant, Larissa. <laughs> well, you know, us artists. It's these artists. I got, so, I got so many tweets, take the corner office for the entire <laughs> area, like, East Coast and West Coast of this. <laughs> But Ray, what are you what are you thinking about here? How do you how do you work? With we played it, with this a couple of different ways, and I am. Um, uh, 
indebted to uh, Larissa um, and Melissa Bernstein that was on the set that day and Nina Jack, who yeah, were all three of them letting me know yours and uh, you know, Vince's wishes, but also just um, Actually, I do owe them. so uh, protective of the Kim character being um, three-dimensional and what, what I've been trying to build with you guys that because my instinct at first was to play it so apologetic because mm -hmm. that you feel terrible that you've made somebody squirm and put them in a vulnerable position and they reminded me rightfully so that just like in the nail salon scene when jimmy says um you should be working somewhere where someone cares about you it is equally unfair of him yes. if he loves me to keep guilting me about yes. this i owe them money i have a contract with hamlin hamlin and mcgill i am doing well there and so it was great that they gave me permission to not play it apologetically. Well, I, I, I think of that as being like sort of the end of The Graduate, where he, it's him banging on the church door saying, come be free with me. Don't, don't play the game. Don't, so what, you owe the money. Come here. Be a maverick yeah, with me. Yeah, and she's not saying, no way would I ever work with you. It's just, don't do that to me right now, you know? Right. She's, I, one of the things I love about the character is that she is a striver she's ambitious she's just as ambitious as jimmy is yes she she wants she wants what she's got here she wants to be a good lawyer and yes. to get ahead and of course here are uh, the cattle here are the cattlemen, the cattlemen. <laughs> are the cattlemen. Uh, jeremy and julianne and w one of the things that's that's a it's i don't know if it's a funny story but one of the things that's ironic is actually as we were shooting the first episode uh, the writing staff and I and Jennifer Hutchinson, who, uh, who, who wrote this episode, were all sitting in a conference room at the same hotel that all the actors stayed in. And uh, one, uh, Gordon, Gordon Smith, or I think actually it might have been my assistant, Joey Lou, went running and said, the Kettleman's are here. And so, <laughs> and so we, we ran out and we met uh, Jeremy and Julianne and brought them into the writer's room for a little bit. And they had no idea that we were actually breaking an episode that they oh, were really? that they were in and uh, we were we were just so excited to meet them oh that's funny they're and, great and i was so happy that uh, we were able to to bring these two back for this uh, this episode you know, there's a woman who tweets uh, about the legality and whether or not uh, Better Call Saul is like up right. on its snuff, and she, she has a commentary every week about how they do it, sort of a grading chart and she circled this particular scene uh, as saying emotionally that kim that that ray handles this exactly as you would handle this. Yes. They're like, tonally, this is exactly how you would have to sort of lay this out to clients and, 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 and see if they'll and take it. And I remember, Melissa, we played it a couple different we ways. We did. Because you could take in, like, you're crazy, I'm going to punch you in the yeah. face. And like, oh, yeah? <laughs> no, well, you, and you kind of get that out of your system because <laughs> <laughs> they're so committed that sometimes you're like, are they? Um, right. But, no, you, you handled this brilliantly. It was, it was a really fun scene. And we had so much time. It was a pleasure. But you guys she, really do give us time to rehearse and I've find I've never things. heard that before. <laughs> yeah, no, well... We had time to find it. It was amazing. Especially because you have those long scenes. Mm -hmm. that the, you can really work it in the blocking, and then by the time you're shooting, a lot of the choices are made. Oh, she's just... Julianne is wonderful. I love the she's two so of these, great. I love the two of these facing but, off. But, but, but Jeremy plays the yes. perfect foil. That's what I'm going to yes. say. Yeah. I would love perfect to watch all of their foil. scenes over again just to watch Jeremy when he asks for coffee and no one gives a crap. That's coming up, yes. yes. He's, um, he always does the op. He's the opposite <laughs> of her. If you he divide the frame... The smallest, he's quietest things. It just, I love but it. Do you know that she's getting like a lot of sex... And emails like guys that want really? to, yeah like sh it's she emailed me going you're well, not going to I guess it, they want there's a lot of directionless men out there they just need well, some guys what's yeah, funny exactly. what's funny that is that Julianne said that this is uh, she felt this is the least uh, I don't know the, the least the least uh, appealing character the least sexual sexy. character yeah. least sexy character she's ever played and boy that is the opposite of the truth <laughs> there's something about Mrs. Kettleman oh wow she's a, okay, she's a, Peter. She's a, she's a guy magnet away with it you know like. oh, wait, way to go here, Kim here thanks go. Kim way to oh, go I have comes... to work I can't believe I actually have to walk down those stairs and, unbelievable and Howard you is... see the decision I made I'm Howard. not going down the stairs down. <laughs> I'm staying I knew how many shit. takes we'd do everybody stops I'm going to give you a look is what I'm going to do everybody stops I love this. I'm going to give you a look, and, I think. And Howard's? Yeah, that's what I'm going to give you. <laughs> this is... <laughs> I loved this. When I got this script, I loved that that's there because... 
Because it's shaking Kim's idea of the ethical approach to the law and the, the people that she holds up as, like, yes. the pillars. Yes. I'll say that shot from the top where everyone stops did take a while to get, and it was the night that you guys were up for the Emmy, and everyone was looking at me, and they all wanted to go home. Oh, really? Oh, that's right. And I'm that's like, right. guys, it's 5 p.m. It doesn't even start for three hours. That's, Let's just get it. Oh, that's that's also, that was a different show. So but it was the same yes, crew, I know, so they I know. were so excited. Yes, I've, well... We knew that you were, you were, I knew exactly what scene you were shooting that day. Yeah. And, I, and I, I was thinking about that as much as I was thinking, it helped take my mind off of the other stuff. And some of the actors could have stayed forever because it seems that oh. those Emmy Awards, those Emmy Awards, oh. somebody had been killed prematurely. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, this, by the way. She's is, also in the it, other one, right? Yeah, is, and she turns into Meryl Streep. I just watched that episode. <laughs> like, she hands it. Oh, ha- she's like, great. She was great amazing. Scenes. In that scene, this week's episode. Yeah, yeah. I also want to. I want to highlight that 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 beautiful shot that was just up. That was, uh, I believe, a techno crane yeah, shot. That Is was, that right? Yes. Over, over. Everyone was over seventy five, and we were putting this flying camera over them, but nobody <laughs> seemed to notice. But we had to remove everybody to change directions. But it was, it was. And that took an hour and a half. What's, what's, now was she a local actress? Yeah. What's because Jean's she is background? Great. What's Jean's background? She is a local know? actress. And She's very good. Needs legal help. <laughs> Offices of James McGill Esquire, how may I direct your call? Yes, yes, of course. Um, one moment, please. Deja vu, hello again. I love this cut, this, this cut skip where he goes in the door and then he. Tell us about that. Well, it's. It, the cut with the action, just we finally got it there, and it works great. Because as originally, I remember, as, as, as written, there was another... There's he a moved, little scene left. He moved yes. out into the hall, and, and you, you and trimmed that out. And we took that out, so now it was moving from him going out the door right into the booth. <laughs> I, love, I love it. I love that. It just, it's a nice transition there. Yeah, I love Except that. that it's my booth, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yes, there, there you are, back at Loyola. Oh, right. is, that, yeah. is that your booth? That's my booth. Wait. Yeah, see where Jeremy's like, I'll take coffee, and no one gives a crap. I, that's the that's the best. Now, is that something you guys came up in rehearsal with they, a rehearsal? Uh, with them, no. Uh, he, things just come out, and I had been told like just embrace the genius. And <laughs> they were rehear- they rehearse off camera all the yeah, time, and and you're practice. sometimes watching, yeah. and you kind of can't even do your own work about like notes because I'm laughing so hard at yeah. the stuff, and then I was like, oh shit, I, I wasn't paying attention. Because it, you get so into what's coming out of their mouths. Uh, the thing that's so wonderful is that it's very funny, but it's also, uh, there is a grounding, and these two really do care about each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think uh, Julianne and Jeremy actually went through um, Albuquerque as the Kettleman's. They, they, would, they, would go, they would go grocery shopping, oh, really? they would go to dinner, and they would, they would stay in character so they could just have that rapport. And it's, it's, it's actors, it's cast that's willing to do that kind of detailed work. And most, makes actors, the rest of us look most so actors that you have cast would be willing to do that. There is the rare exception that you couldn't put a fucking gun to my head and I'm going to stay in character. <laughs> <laughs> Could you excuse me for a moment? I uh, had a big gulp on the way over. Oh. <laughs> this is so great because that is the bathroom in the diner. <laughs> and it is the tiniest bathroom I've ever seen in my whole life. This was. And then they cast this other lovely gentleman who is not tiny and, and is in there. And, 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 yes. And, and Larissa, <laughs> this, is, this is all credit to you because. Uh, Vince and I both thought that that bathroom was too small and that you'd have to go somewhere else. So small. And yeah. you, said, you said, no, I want to shoot in there. Well, they, uh, they were like, well, you can't use this bathroom. And I looked at it and I was like, it's kind of genius, though. Like, if you, if you were okay with l- just two shots, um, you know, I knew it was being intercut with a phone call, so you yeah. didn't need and, that and many you're, 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 Except you're, I'm doing the lines off screen in the six inches that's left over on the other half <laughs> oh, yeah. of the bathroom door. <laughs> yeah, door. I know. And, and when the guy... The you're, other about, guy you're about to see how small it is in about one second. Come on, big guy. Let's get out of there. Oh, he was... And then he was in a... Oh, the we big guy like, had to try to get past me that he was lovely. Watch this. This, <laughs> this is uh, a member of our this crew. This is fucking wonderful. It is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so good. The timing... The timing is just perfect. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because I think we there was also a nice bit at the beginning of the scene where he's like, "Hi," and and the guy and the guy looks, looks over. Hey, hey, Skip, how when you've got a phone call like this and you're intercutting two characters, what are you thinking about about which character to be on? It it all depends on how how it feels and how the dialogue comes off. It's you just you want to be on each character for their key moments, and you want to also hear the other side of the conversation, mm -hmm. and not. Like in the bathroom scene, you didn't want to be away from there too much because it was such a confined space and you saw the guy in the background standing there and then when he comes out, you certainly want to see him bump. Mm. So it's, it's just a matter of, uh, the, as you go along, you get a feel for where you should be. Oh, you make it sound so easy. It's Maestro. Not that, it's not Maestro. That easy. <laughs> it's not that easy. But with the characters, you, 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 know, you kind of get a really good feel for where you should be because they play it so well. Mm -hmm. And, and Ray, you you pay editors for your screen time, extra screen. I do, time. Yeah. I do. That's one so way that you get more screen factors time. In. Wait, wait, wait. I is that, is that, that how it works? Yeah. That's right. It's, oh, it's all based on gifts to the editing room. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering why I'm always buried in the corner with a long <laughs> shot. <laughs> Everybody knows when you get to set, you make fun. With, you make friends with the editor and craft services. That's your two big things. We want you. And here she is giving giving her ultimatum. And I love that suit, the texture of that. Everything jacket. about it. It's like tangerine. Oh, yeah. It's the fabric. Which and all, I know that all you hail guys put all such hail Jennifer uh, Jennifer Arcot. Jennifer Bryan. Jennifer Bryan, who is just and it's it's something that I, I don't think who uh, just got engaged, by the way. She just yeah. got engaged. Oh, did she? We just, yes, we yeah. just, just met her fiancé the other, the other night, and he's, he's going so nice. to be traveling to Albuquerque, he said, so I'm excited about that. But it's, the, one of the things that I think um, I didn't know before I started doing this is... I love costumes, that moment! <laughs> costumes are not just so important for uh, the viewer... Uh, but the actors, it's, it's, it's you guys. You guys sometimes, uh, you guys sometimes learn about the character from from the costume. With Patrick, oh, I abso something absolutely. About that you know, I'm, I'll take credit for for some of my work, but I'd say eighty percent of it is that Jennifer Bryan put, put me in a suit of armor. She <laughs> so put me, would I, Patrick. Thank you very much, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jennifer's stories that she's telling and helping the actor tell, it helps. When you're looking at them, too, there were scenes that I had with Jimmy where I wanted to remember um, that no matter what, I know that he is always trying to do the best he can and, his, and the essence that he is, I, I adore. And I would look down at that loafer that they made one of them yes. broken and connected with a paper clip yes. and my heart would break every time and I would fall in love with it. You know, that's one detail. I'm so sorry. We never got a really good close-up. This, this episode... Well, everybody out there freeze frame it right this now when episode, you can find that. This episode, you get the best detail. look at it because he fools with it. He fools with it a, scene yes. a little bit later. I have to say, I know backing up uh, a bit... One of the, my favorite moments in this episode, and this is this is Jenny Hutchison, is when uh, when, when Mr. Kettleman can't read the subtext. No, and says, yes. Yes. Like, and you're yeah. thirty thousand. <laughs> and here's this is arguably the nastiest thing that Hamlin ever does. Yeah. What do you think, Patrick? Absolutely, in terms of being a, a dick, uh, this is this is a dick move. But honestly. Uh, it's also it's a, it's a business screw you because he's 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 acting all casual. Once again, he's back in my lair. He's in my fiefdom, and he's acting like he owns the goddamn place, you know. And his business with throwing in the cornfield. There is no cornfield. Don't you be labeling my office. And so when he wants help for this, ah, fuck you. Carry it yourself, you asshole. Sorry, I'm not passionate about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right, Patrick. <laughs> but of course, but Kim gets from that. It's like there's no he has no loyalty to like. Just dumping her the second the crazy cattlemen's can't be kept. This was this was one of the things uh, that I was proud of in the construction of this episode because you think right at this point, Kim is a little bit closer to leaving leaving HHM and joining Jimmy in that beautiful office in the sky, mm. maybe. Um, and, and then this shot again, echoing one hundred and one. Mm, my favorite. Although this is your little your variation on it over here coming over to this side, Larissa. Now, Larissa, when you see a, a scene like 101 and you're thinking, I'm in the same spot, what, what are you thinking about? How do I... Well, I mean, in that, like, and it, it had been talked about. It was one of the things, and you just went, I just said, let's just use it. Like, I know Vince shot it. It's perfect, and it reveals her very nicely. And I think it, you know, like, at the end of the day, you want everything to look nice, but it has to actually speak to what the scene's about. And I thought kind of that slow reveal of her there and, and that she can help him or not help him and that she's always 
uh, their relationship is so important. And I think in, in, in this scene, you know, you're never... You are, I think. You, it's just what you just said, that you're wishing she'll come over and maybe she will. And so... So, yeah, I mean... No, I'll tell you what I'm wishing. i got to tell you something. Don't let it go to her head. But she's looking mighty hot right there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And, you know, there's, there's, no, there's nothing like a touch of sin when the girl walks in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you were sick as shit that day. And, yes. and you were like... Oh. She, and she was like... And she, the smoking... She I was could like, barely hold oh, it. Her and, I, and I used to smoke for years, and I know that's horrible, but I did, so I do know how to smoke, but... um. Oh, what's her name? Uh, the lovely uh, props master, be- gorgeous, gorgeous girl. Trina. 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 She is, every time you're elbow up on me in that scene, she's uh, squatting down because if Bob is smoking the cigarette that I'm smoking, we couldn't get him sick. So I would put, put, take it out of my mouth oh, like I'm handing yeah. it to him, and she'd switch. You had to swap to an wow. unsmoked There's cigarette. There's a Texas and hand swap. It to Bob. There's yeah. a Texas swap with the cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm and telling then you. I remember had... we were like, it sounds like Kim's been crying yeah. because of my stuffiness, and so we thought it we're was like, perfect. I'm <laughs> telling you, Trina is in a class She's, all Trina's by amazing. herself. She She's really amazing. is. We're we are so lucky to have all oh, this great group of people we work with. Yeah, it's we just, are. There's there's. There's no two ways around it. And we keep saying it and saying it and saying it, but it's absolutely true. Yeah, it's It's just so great. They love hearing it out there. Well, they love hearing it. Everybody loves, everybody on the, who's listening to the commentary loves hearing how good we've got it. Well, yeah, we it, do. It, it doesn't, <laughs> it, it, the compliments don't compare to how, how really great they are. That's how good they are. And there I is, love that shot, Larissa. And I love how you play yes. out that, like, that it, what Kim says is, is, is true. There is nothing better to offer them. She's not screwing oh. him by saying that. And and I love where you put this shoe box. And and that it's the same shoe box, that's, right? That's right. From, the same shoe box is the teaser of 101. Yeah. This is the super significant shoe box. Did you pick a floor time shoe box on purpose yes. or something? Why are you allowed to say? It's it just felt right. Okay, that was <laughs> so keeping a secret. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, uh, this is a wonderful Chris Joss song that uh, Thomas Goldenbeck found. Music. It just and it's perfect because it's it's so cool, and Mike is so cool, and here he is. He's now he's finally he's out at work doing the stuff. Thank God, God the I'm out of, the out of the booth. Out of the booth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite scene, Larissa, I, when he eats apples. I, yes, my mother's favorite scene. I just want to mention. I do want to mention though for uh, for the for those of you listening. There is a deleted scene. I know. That I was c- went in between these two so scenes, sad. and oh, it's, it's a terrific scene of Jimmy basically begging Mike in the, in the booth oh, yes. to help solve his problem. And we we ended, up cutting, we ended up cutting it for uh, mainly for time because one of the things that our, our theory in editing is usually let's take out one painful big cut rather than trying to squeeze down every yeah. scene. And you just don't. And wow. Skip, yeah. what, you want to talk about that? Well, it was a tough scene to have to take out because it, it kind of started a little bit of the relationship with Jimmy and, and Mike, you know, the, the battling back and forth trying to convince him to do it. Mm-hmm. And it was just, it was, it was all about time to get it out. And and I think the viewers aren't going to miss it, but it, it was a nice scene that, uh, that we could have Excuse my <laughs> I guarantee you the viewers, anytime they don't get to see Mike, they're, they're, gonna they're heartbroken. It. This is extra, yes. this is extra content that uh, you should be able to access if you're, if you're... Oh, really? Some other, yes, this is a... Deleted it's scenes? A del- this is yeah. a deleted oh, scene. Oh, because that is a very... Oh, wow, that's cool. And this is... Jonathan and Bob were hilarious in it. This is... Uh, and this sequence I am so proud of. I, I, I love the it's way great. it's shot. I love the way it feels. This uh, is another one poor Jonathan, I think, had pneumonia and it was 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah, you were really sick of this I one. was sick that time. Yeah, really no, sick. I had bronchitis. And I, yeah, whatever. And I love that And you were being told there were, like, what, wolves and hyenas? Snakes. Like, snakes. Snakes. Snakes everywhere. Like, there's a snake wrangler walking around. Well, we're in the like, middle of the high desert, for Christ. Of course there's snakes. <laughs> <laughs> This was actually inspired by this whole sequence and this idea was really inspired when we scouted the uh, Kettleman house uh, in episode one. This is one of the advantages of having writers uh, in on production because I, I looked, at, I, I don't know if I should take credit for it, but I looked at the back of the house and I said, this is like a dollhouse. It does you can look like see a dollhouse. Right, and you mm-hmm. can see everything that's going on in here. And that, that's, that was kind of the kickoff for this idea of having Mike steal the money. And I love that he's listening to a ball game here.
Mike is so cool. Mike is super he cool. Is. Yes. He is super cool. Very cool. No, I love this. Uh, when Watching it and then seeing it with the music and everything, it kind of had an out of sight feel. It was very I, mm -hmm. Detroit. I love that. Well, it's it's all from the performances and these these great shots, uh, these great moments that you guys did together. And this, of course, is you know this is another shout out to Arthur Albert, our DP. This is a very tricky scene. It really was. There's, yeah. Because did you have to go back and do reshoots on yes, this one? Yes, we did. I think there something small. I think something was something might have been picked up, but this is this is uh, this is this is Larissa's it's very baby for sure. Looking. And never forget, folks at home. When it's night, it's night. And it's late. Yeah. And the old guy needs to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, once in a while, we have a location where we can actually shoot uh, 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 day, day for night where we can black out the curtains. This was not, with those big windows, this wasn't one of those. Oh, Mike. So good. Yeah, I remember reading this in the script and just being like, this is amazing. I mean, this was all so perfectly mm -hmm. laid out and just both visually and the whole um the the, the plan the heist mm -hmm. and so smart and how, how, how i remember reading how, going why is he spraying this money what's happening yeah 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 <laughs> and i love the way you guys do that whether it's the paper towel roll to do the mm -hmm. robot sex voice that jimmy does um yeah. like you never know what he's setting up when it's yeah. happening this sequence is also one of the ones where it's a really different kind of directing than um, you see on a lot of television because this is all visual. There's if you're if you're in the I always say if you're in the other room making a sandwich, you'll have no idea what's going on <laughs> right. because it's right. all about the picture. And there are a lot of directors who can do uh, a good dialogue scene, and there are a lot of directors who can do a visual scene like this. But there's not as many who can do both, and Michael there's not as many Lissa. there's Michael not as many Lissa. who can, there's not as many who can do both the drama and the comedy and it's a very special okay, crossover yeah. and so thank you for making our dreams come true well, it was it really uh, it's all written and there's the reveal there is the reveal the money he's and so as, smart and as i was telling peter larissa like your your equal ease with um mm -hmm. talking to actors and directing Jeez. The scene as is the same as you have technically. The fact that you do both just as well is yeah. so great. Jonathan, is is were you sick in this scene? No, is this your I don't turn know. To be sick? I mean, who knows, man? <laughs> but but I like. I tell you what, I do like is the decision here a lot. Mm -hmm. This is a key moment. In I the love series. this scene. This is a key. This it's a very short scene. It's a key moment. It's just as key as when he doubles back in episode 102 and rescues his uh, rescues his clients. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to give up. Some of that money is not just the money he took from the Kettleman's. He's also replacing the money he yeah. spent right. with his own hard-earned uh, elder law money. I almost thought he was doing a Catholic cross when I saw this scene for the first time the other night. Am I correct in assuming we're now square? Square. But Jonathan, in playing that, when he when he says it's the right thing, don't don't you think as Mike Mike respects that, or do you think Mike doesn't and things take the no, money Mike's and run? Doing, Mike's doing a job, and if and if the job was to do this, that's what's done. Mm. Period. Gotcha. Good morning. Because Jeremy's so that's great his in this. honor. That's Mike's honor. And that's one of the things we love about Mike is is he's so true to his code. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love what you've done with the place. This this is mm. this this is one of uh Look another at Jeremy's hitch of the pants. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> and just the way they sit perfect. Yep. Yeah, yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Cuz they're so comfortable with each other, these two. Yeah. We told you there will be no deal. And I like that Mr. Kettleman is always a beat later yes. than yes. Mrs. Kettleman yep. and yes. everything. Well, there was one scene there before where his shoulder was in front of hers. In the in the booth yes. in the cafe, and yes. I thought that looks wrong. You know, it's always what it should be right there. Under the sink. It's the this yes. <laughs> as always like as a, always like he's, a chipmunk. She's as always he's way behind. <laughs> yeah. And this is this is one of the things I love about this scene is this is wonderful use of what we call off-screen space. 
we, <laughs> we, we, can just, we can just picture what's going on in that in that bathroom right now. We don't need to and, see it. Yeah, and Mr. Kettleman's saying, like, I'm sure it's somewhere. Like, there's only one place. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, and, and I love how Bob plays this. Yep. He is, he is not glorying in his victory here. No. You're right. It is sort of like the stuff with the, the, the twins. There's a sadness to, to doing what he has to do. Yes. Almost. Right about now. What? You, you thief. Takes one to know one, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's genius. A good magician never reveals his secrets. Now, here's what we're going to do. Oh, you don't tell us what to do. You stole This is, yeah. You stole and from us. One of the things I love, Larissa, about there's the way you shoot, you really use the wide angle lenses so beautifully. You know, you, 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 there's, there's a very dynamic. Well, I was so excited when, you, you know, you guys were like, we love the wides. We love, and I was like, thank, oh, good, great. You know, and so hmm. you so rarely see that. And I think now that. Especially now that we all have TVs at home that can show us this, it's like, you know, it's become, I guess, I want to say cinematic, but in a weird way that's almost insulting. It's like above that. It's televisual. Televisual. Oh, I like televisual. it. I like it. We'll tell about the bribe you took. You could do that. It's, it, uh, it's so much fun to see him have a little bit of victory here. Some point in this scene... Uh, I think he actually plays with. We may have passed it already. He actually plays with that paper clip. Yeah. That's on his. Uh, yep. That's yeah. On it's his, at the end. That's on his. That's on his. Yep. Oh, okay. That's it's coming while she's up. Crying, yeah. That's coming yes. up. And that's something that only you, the uh, the the commentary listeners, are going to know about. It's that's a, that's what we it. call a subtlety. And and. Uh, I can be brought back into now. A what about this? By looking at it, uh, Larissa, I have to ask you about this mirror. There's a giant yeah, mirror back there. how much of a pain in the ass was that? We realized later a little, it was a little bit, yeah. <laughs> we were like, uh, you so. Can, you'd have to be able to see the camera and the lights constantly. Yep. <laughs> yep. Has it been photoshopped uh, yeah, No, there's no, no it's effect. not. We were just like, and but I mean, everything, he, because it, all those windows become mirrors too, you know, oh, like, yeah. so, but you kind of, you know, we blocked it and then we, the shots worked and then it just took a little... Aye. A little extra time. Well, in the next the next episode, episode eight, you'll you'll see uh, the most complicated digital effect we've ever done, which was literally to put uh, oh, right. put put glass in an empty space where there was no glass. And I'm sure we'll talk about that when we get to the next one. But it's nice to be able to use the mirror with the reflection. Yeah, no, it's, I think it's, it really yes. adds yeah. to those shots. A it lot. does. I just remember Arthur going, really? They couldn't have used a painting or something, Arthur. <laughs> so Bob plays this and so he's brilliant Because he's beautiful. not, it's, he feels for them. He you does. Know, there is, and, and that sp- speaks to everything in the writing, is that there's a humanity to everything. It's not caricature. And even though the Kettlemans are wacky, they're real people, yeah. you know? Yeah. And one of the things I love ab- about the way you uh, cut this, Skip, is, is your very judicious with your use of big close-ups. Mm-hmm. They they mm-hmm. do pop them like for instance the last end of the last scene we see them, but they're you, you know how to play the scene without, <laughs> I love without this using framing. It. This Thank is you. really so is wonderful. Yeah. That's great. I like staying wider. That's it feels great. so much better. Yeah. Until you really have to be in close. And we have a cast that can uh, can use their whole bodies. This is they, well, they're close-ups something are sweet. great, but the you know, like the current sort of obsession to play every pivotal dramatic moment or every punchline joke with a crazy close up is ridiculous, I think. And, and I love how these two are holding hands, they look like Hansel and Gretel in the yeah. forest. <laughs> and that's and that that's little sweater, nice thank you. the little sweater, Thanks. and the thank you. That was a beautiful moment. Now, this is where my friend Julie Kavner just broke down, she felt so bad for him. Yeah, this this is to me. This scene encompasses so much of what is Jimmy, is, is the sense of uh, a, a broken ambition, mm-hmm. a guy who has really not gotten what he he wants out of life, and in some ways he has worked so hard to get. And it's some of it is just because he he still wants to be a good person, mm-hmm. and if if he had. If he hadn't, if he had let the Kettlemans go to jail for longer and not returned the money, mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe things would have gone worse for Kim at HHM. Mm-hmm. Maybe he and Kim would be in that office. Right. But, but 
here he is. He's done the right thing and he's by himself and maybe he's never, ever going to be in this office. I'll say this. I think, I mean, yeah, it's Julie, but I think it, it, she is an example of the people to this point that are so enjoying this show and that are so on board with with Bob, with Jimmy. Now we're... And that, we're go ahead. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. And then no, we're no, back no. with this wonderful yeah. shot that you did. You already planted earlier in the episode. I want to know what happened to Julie. Uh, yeah, what happened to Julie? No, I'm just saying that she said she she just went on about this, about the frustration of it, meaning that she was so involved with the show at this point yeah. that mm -hmm. it, and and what Bobby did to her, what was written, what was filmed. So, yeah. I mean, we all sit out and we look, we look at the performance and we look at the shot, we look at the drama, the editing, blah, blah. But the audience that they are in this involved is uh, what am I trying to say? And it's great. And he's phenomenal here. And I remember so uh, good. And Peter, yourself, and Vincent saying to me, like, we want this scene to be so long. And I just was sitting there going, is this long enough? Oh, but like, this is, <laughs> and, this, and this is great. Yeah. yeah. Law offices of James M. Ugh, Hill, how much fucking my great. Because he will bounce back. Wow. No matter what. And that's, that's the thing. Uh, that's that's, the a, thing that's, a, a, that's a great episode, too. So, <laughs> 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 so hard. And, and again, I, I wish uh, Jenny Hutchison was in here with us because she just wrote the hell out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, it's all there. And you guys acted the hell trip. out of it. Skip cut the hell out of it. And Larissa, you just knocked it out of the park. Thank you, folks. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks Thank for you. watching. Thank you. And listening. And listening. Mm -hmm.